Hey now, people. I am making some, I was going to say keto meatballs, but I'm going to, as you're staring at red peppers and onions and garlic and celery, I'm going to not say keto, but I am going to say low carb because they're going to have, so I bought a giant, I have a big party tomorrow and I have to, I'm going to make meatballs. So this is a big, it's upside down. It is over six pounds of ground beef from Costco. So if you're doing six pounds, that's a pretty good size thing. I have three eggs. I might use four. I don't know. I have a bunch of celery, garlic, Vidalia onion. Uh, those are those mixed, you know, those um, tri-color. You get like yellow, red, and orange peppers in a package. So I just had a few of those, and I figured they'll make it nice. I have wisps, which are those cheese crumbs. It's just cheese, Parmesan, I believe. Oh, for the love of God, can you read that? Parmesan, cheese, cheese culture, salt enzymes, butter, fat, milk, salt, spices, onion powder, parsley, yeast extract, blah, blah, blah. It does have seasoning in it. This is seasoned Italian herb. Uh, I will add uh, a lot more oregano and basil to this. Um, I'll show you after. I like, well, not, I don't like pork rinds. But I, I like them in recipes as a substitute for breading, if you wanted to do like breaded and fried pork chops or chicken or whatever. So I take them and I throw them in my food processor and it makes them into crumbs. So, I don't know how easy that is. So this is the gross part. When you're dealing with like ground beef, you're going to have to touch it with your fingers, people. I'm sorry. So I take off my Fitbit and my... Apple Watch because I don't want them getting all full of disgusting stuff. So I'm going to take my little paring knife and slice along there, tear open the package. I bought this ground beef at Costco like Tuesday night. It's now Saturday. I didn't want to leave it in the fridge since Tuesday, so I froze it. And as you can tell, breaking it apart, there's just a little bit that's still icy what did I say? I bought it? Did I buy it Monday or Tuesday? I can't remember, but I froze it. And I knew to take it out of the freezer Thursday because today is Saturday. So two days, it basically, I mean, like I said, this part's a little bit, you can hear it. It's like a little frosty. So anyway, dump your ground beef in a bowl. I don't really have measurements for you because I'm not a terrific measure person. But I'm going to crack my eggs first. So one, two, three. Cool. Now, this is, as I said, celery, pepper, onion, garlic. I'm just going to dump it in. This is going to be a nightmare because it's with your hands you have to do it. Ew, gross. It smells amazing, all that yummy stuff. So... I guess I'm, sorry, adjusting. I guess I'm going to add some of these crumbs. So I keep my stuff in glass jars after I open them. So this is an open thing of those crumbs. Again, it's just cheese with some seasoning. It does smell like oregano and stuff. How much am I using? I don't know, that much. Uh, cool. Then I have the pork rinds. Of course, in a perfect world, I would have like a scoop or something in here. I don't. So how many pork rinds? I don't know. Shake some in. I don't want the, the meatballs to be, you know, a majority of something other than meat. But I do want there to be some kind of, I don't know, binding in there. If you just took meat and shaped them into balls, they would fall apart. So the egg helps hold them together. The cheese kind of I mean, I don't know that this stuff melts because it's it's already kind of dried cheese or whatever. But this helps to kind of throw it together. So now you're just going to have to be brave. And oh, how am I going to do this and then shut my camera off? Oh, God. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to do it. Mike, I used to watch my grandmother do this. Every time she made meatballs or whatever, and I was just like, yeah. Well, you know, here we are 60 years later, and I'm still, ew. But I don't know any other way to do this. I mean, I guess you could put rubber gloves on and stuff. But, I mean, I'll just tell you, my grandmother didn't put rubber gloves on. 
And you know, women were tougher in those days. I quite fancy myself as being a tough guy someday. So I'm just gonna get in there and have at it and mix this stuff up. I can tell you right now, it kind of feels like it needs another egg. I don't know how to describe that to you or why. You make it enough times, you'll know. But three eggs for six pounds of meat is not a lot. So I should have taken one out of the fridge. I don't have one in the fridge. So maybe what I'll do right now is, by the way, this is a little bit of a workout too. All you people that are old like me. Jesus, Lord God. Okay. I'm gonna stir this part up. I can see that I, got, I left quite a bit on the side there. Um, so maybe what I'll do is I'll continue. I'm gonna pause, I think, for a minute, clean my hands a little bit, shut my camera off, and then, ugh, and then I will um, go get another egg and throw that in and mix it. And then I'll come back when I've got my oregano and basil and uh, everything's gonna be cool. That's my way of saying preheat your oven to 400. Well, that's what I did anyway. So now here's my big yellow Tupperware bowl. And I just wanna say this yellow bowl was given to me by my friend Jane when we were working together in the office before COVID. Jane's mom passed away and she came to me one day and said, um, you know, is there anything you like? My, my mom had all these things. She was cleaning out her house. And she said, oh, she's got this big Tupperware bowl. And I'm like, oh, I would love a big Tupperware bowl. So this came from Jane and Jane's mom, whom I never had the pleasure to meet. But I have to say that every time I use this bowl, I think of Jane and it's yellow and sort of sunshiny and beautiful. And I think of her mom and like all the great dinners or, or you know, meals and things that she prepared, uh, salads and all kinds of things in this. It's a monster bowl. So I'm sure she did not use it like on an everyday basis because it's enormous. But I bet you when there was like, you know, a 4th of July picnic or something, she busted this bowl out. So I did add two more eggs because this is a shit ton of ground beef. Um, I do have dried basil, dried oregano, and I just, you know, I threw it on. I don't measure. I think I added, I opened up this package of crumbs and I finished off what was in the jar and then topped up the jar with the fresh stuff. So I think we're good to go. I just preheated the pre preheated. I just preheated the oven to what did I say? 400 degrees. And I have a large tablespoon and two baking sheets. So on these two baking sheets, I'm not going to grease them. I'm not going to put parchment on them. Sometimes it just makes them harder to clean. I know that seems counterintuitive and crazy, but basically you just want to take a scoop and then you wanna just form it into a ball and then drop it on the pan. And you wanna do that as many times until you run out of uh, stuff in the bowl. And I'm gonna try to keep them more or less the same size, at least I think. I don't know, I mean, this would be smart where I would pull out an ice cream scoop because people do that, smart people do that. I didn't say, whatever, I didn't say that, that's up to you. These are gonna be some pretty big meatballs, but that's what she said. Sorry. I need to share this because from the magic of filming, I had two and I thought for sure, I'm like, I'm gonna run out of room. Look, I did not run out of room. Are they the exact same size every single meatball? Of course they are, I did them, hello. No, they're not. And it doesn't matter. Uh, and why, I, you might be wondering, why are you baking these and not like just throwing them into red sauce? So this is Costco ground beef. It's really good quality. I love Costco's meat. These, I believe, are 88%. So that would mean 12% fat. So, which isn't like a high content, but it's, it's up there. I don't want to drop this into sauce because then I'd have a lot of, well, first of all, you don't have, like meat, meat tastes better to me when it's browned. So if you drop it right into sauce, there's nothing wrong with that. If you want to drop this into hot sauce right now and cook it that way, knock yourself out. I just prefer it to be browned. And I also want to get rid of some of that fat. So I'm going to put them in the oven 
for maybe about a half an hour. And I may even hit the broiler to get like get them brown and crisp. And then uh, on to the next step. So Hey, people, I forgot that I got so busy the day of my party that I forgot to film the remaining steps. So I happened to buy this Victoria white linen marinara sauce at Costco. You get two huge bottles. This is 40 ounces, so it's more than a quart. Two of these for like $9.99. And the ingredients are super clean. Tomatoes in juice, onions, olive oil, sea salt, garlic, basil, spices, calcium chloride. Super clean and relatively low carb. A half cup serving is six grams of carbs. I don't know if you count net grams or not, but if you do, six minus two is four. So that's not bad, a half cup serving. So all I did was I took my crock pot out. I put the meatballs in the crock pot, poured on one full jar of this sauce. I have since used a little bit of this one, but a full jar was 40 ounces and I cover, you know, it wasn't covered or they weren't like floating in it, but they were close enough. And then just put them on hot, uh, you know, heat, uh, high heat, I guess, in my crock pot. And I think two, three hours later, they were piping hot and ready to serve for the party. Uh, I have a lot of meatballs left. <laughs> I'm like, meatball salad, meatball sandwich, meatball, meatball covered meatballs. Um, but they were very good. So I would definitely put that recipe into rotation and uh, enjoy your meatballs.